With spooky season upon us, there's a good chance that your spooky series tolerance is the equivalent of mild salsa. That's right, I'm calling you out. Yeah, your horror tastes, they suck. And you know what? <laughs> so does so does mine, actually. Thankfully, Webtoon has brought us this quiz. A quiz to test out your comfort level and asks you to go scarier. If you dare, of course. I, I, I don't. I'm too much of a coward to do that. <laughs> Let's start out easy for all you cowards, which is me. Grandma is a super cute and actually really informative series to start to dip your toes into the spooky side of things. Following Minu, owner of a very cute flower shop with a special ability. In this world, the spooky scary stuff, that actually exists. Things like Bloody Mary, ghosts, giant skeletons, even some of the more international legends and creatures that I've never heard of. Anyways, Minu is a human who's basically been seeing this their entire life. Anything from these cute little sprouts, adorable, to the terrifying Metman Way, a giant Boogeyman that steals you away at midnight? Or the mare, the equivalent of a sleep paralysis demon that causes nightmares, which sounds insane and terrifying. But it's actually really cool. If you're into the spooky, scary stuff, don't worry, you'll get jump scared by a new monster every so often, but it's actually not about that. It reminds me a lot of Finding Fiends. Instead of a monster of the weak thing where they have to fight off and deal with a new monster every episode, they encounter a monster, sure, that at first might be a little terrifying but they're basically the equivalent of normal people. They have their own personalities, their own goals, their own motivations, their own lives. Like that Metman way. The giant boogeyman thing? Yeah, his name is Felix. He works deliveries and installations for magic mirrors, don't ask. Or the terrifying sleep paralysis demon that causes nightmares? Well, her name's actually Ingrid, who is actually just practicing cutting hair. Look, if the payment for a good haircut is a nightmare every so often, then sign me up. But you get it though, right? This world isn't just some terrifying place where monsters roam around, you have to protect yourselves from these dangerous threats. It feels alive. Like these monsters are more than just monsters, but creatures that exist alongside everyone, even if no one but Minwoo can see them. You even get some notes about every monster that appears at the end of the chapter to learn more about them. Their origin, their legend, all that stuff. It's actually really cool. But hey, that might not be spooky scary enough for you, which is fair. It's a much more sweeter series with hints of the spookier side of things. So let me show you the exciting world of Marionetta. Marionetta does not follow marionettes, but it follows Julia. Also also known as Miss Stick in the Mud, completely opposite to her best friend Camille, starry-eyed and adventurous. They balance each other out, like an extrovert who just claims an introvert as their best friend. Anywho, Camille drags Julia to the circus for her birthday, where she falls in love and stays in the circus. Meanwhile, Julia does also join the circus as well, but not because she falls in love, because she died. You see, this circus is a little quirky. It doesn't exactly hire anyone, so put down your resumes. It only hires the dead. That's right, everyone in this circus is dead. Julia dying by being run over by the circus, and Camille, who wanted to run away from their arranged marriage, decides to sign up for the circus if you catch my drift. Now, aside from the literal dead people running the circus, you might be questioning what's so spooky about this series. I thought I was upgrading my horror, you idiots. First off, that's rude. But second off, fair. Even Grandma had some spooky moments between the genuinely sweet moments of family and friends. Well, that's because you didn't know that the attic is haunted. That's right, the attic is haunted. By what? It's, it, it, it I, honestly, I have no idea. Whatever this goopy yellow monster thing is with multiple eyes and mouths is the main scariest thing. Now, technically, the series really isn't horror. It's actually more fantastical than horrific. And honestly, that's all good for me. As someone who's not really into that horror, getting more of a fantasy series with just a bit of spookiness hiding behind every corner is honestly more fun for me. And I haven't even gotten to the almost depressing world the circus lives in. How sad people's lives are, and also the truest horror of anything, a corrupt government. That's right, the humanity. The series is actually really interesting. There's a lot of mysteries around the recorder, like the government hiding magic, the monster in the attic, and you know, the dead circus. There's a lot of mysteries to get engaged with, and doesn't even begin to mention the deal Julia made at the beginning of the series. But technically, I guess it doesn't have all that much horror in it. So if you're looking to discover some thrills and chills, I got just the series for you. School Bus Graveyard is exactly what you guys want if you're really into horror. We follow a ragtag 
ragtag team of high schoolers going to school, enjoying their lives, and surviving every night against shadowy monsters that outnumber, outrun, and are just terrifying to face down every night. Yeah, the world's a little intense. We follow a big group. I'm not gonna name all of them because I'm terrible at names, but our main character is Ashlyn. You see, I connect with Ashlyn on a fundamental level. Sure, I'm not into ballet or don't hear voices from the abyss, but she hates hanging out with people and is very antisocial. I feel seen. Anyways, on a trip, she accidentally drags her group into maybe another dimension. The how of everything isn't super clear. What is clear is that when the clock strikes 12, instead of the carriage returning to a pumpkin, the sky goes blood red, and the shadowy creatures known as phantoms walk the earth, desperately trying to kill off our main cast for little to no reason. Honestly, the series is wild. There's just something about horror monsters only existing in certain people's minds that is just really terrifying. Like, you're the only person experiencing this horror. Like, you're just going insane, questioning what is or isn't real. Which is actually one of my favorite types of horrors. Now, I'm a coward who's not the biggest fan of horror, but I love a series that can set a haunting atmosphere. A series that can establish itself as scary without throwing a bunch of gore or death in your face or jump scaring you every other episode. This more atmospheric, almost psychological horror is what School Bus Graveyard is all about, baby. Not only is the horror part, maybe, only happening maybe in their minds, but also what's honestly more terrifying that there really isn't a safe space. We see these phantoms start to leak into the real world from time to time, appearing in mirrors or shadows right behind people, just long enough to leave a presence, but when you turn around and look, they're gone. Like something is always right behind you. Like you have to watch your every move just in case there's something about to grab. And those are all the series I have for you today. So make sure you check out that quiz to see where you fall from coward to hardcore horror fanatic. And make sure you check out the series Grandma, Marionetta, and School Bus Grave. You, you want more? That's pretty much all I... Are you sure? All right, it's your funeral. For all you freaks out there, we have Nina's Magic Chest. Now I hear you, what is this? You asked for horror and I gave you the equivalent of Barbie life in the dream house, but that's exactly what's so terrifying about it. I'm actually kind of tempted not to explain this series at all to you and just kind of encourage you to read it now. You know when a plot twist works the best? When you don't expect it. Not that it came out of nowhere, but you didn't think it would or even could wind up this way. Nina's magic chest is exactly that. You see, we follow Nina and her magic chest. Who could have guessed? Nina finds this incredibly gauche, bright pink chest in the trash and takes it home. As you do, I guess. It comes with these three cards that ask you to write down your wish. She does jokingly and closes it. And when she closes it, it explodes with rainbows, sucking her into a different dimension, which grants her wish. And is that it? This is the scariest of the scariest, and this is, and it's about a chest that grants wishes? Well, it's actually a little more than that. The series is honestly a little off from the first couple episodes. It's not spooky scary, but it just feels uneasy. Like you're missing something that's not there. Like you should be nervous about something that hasn't even appeared yet. The art plays a great role in this. Having a soft, cute, and bright art style makes everything feel fake plastic almost. Like you're being tricked, and being tricked, you are. There's a lot hidden behind the cute facade that the series displays. A terrifying, violent, homeless woman, the difference between the chess world and the real world, people with hidden agendas and motivation, and a wild amount of danger and death for such a cute series. Which all culminates to the actual biggest threat in this series, Nina's magic chest. No, not the series, I guess technically, yeah, but no, no, the chest, the chest itself. You see, this chest is the most terrifying threat in not only this series, but in all the series I've mentioned before. That's right, this dumb, bright pink chest with very clearly fake gems is somehow a bigger threat to people than a monster in the attic or shadowy phantoms that appear in your nightmares. I mentioned before that psychological horror is really the only horror I'm a fan of. Not being jump scared or blood or gore, but creating a terrifying atmosphere, a feeling of dread. This dumb chest drags you inside, feeds on your desires, gives them all to you for free, and you grow more and more dependent on it. Enough to lie to your friends, to your family, enough to hide it away, enough to kill for it. Even when you know it's bad for you, even when you know that this chest will lead to your mind breaking. The biggest threat to you isn't the monsters that you face, it's the monster that this chest brings out of you. And that is real horror.
So make sure you check out these series and level up your horror over on Webtoon today.